Hey everyone, uh, over the uh, past year or so, I've had a couple of requests uh, from subscribers to make a video such as this, so I figured, eh, why the heck not? Now, if you followed my channel over the past couple of years, you'll know that about three years ago, I had exactly one guitar uh, that I pretty much played everything on. And if you've uh, continued uh, to follow along as my channel grew, uh, you'd begin to notice more and more guitars beginning to creep in and enter the picture as I went along. Uh, I think I've used about 25 or 30 different guitars over the past uh, few years in uh, all of my videos. Uh, about 14, 13 or 14 of which are mine, which I've purchased over the past couple of years. And the others, the uh, the really nice high-end three, four, five thousand dollar guitars that I've used, have all been borrowed from a couple of friends of mine who uh, both have outstanding high-end guitar collections. Uh, the American Strats, the Gibson Les Pauls, the Gibson ES three thirty fives, and the ES three thirty nines, the Paul Reed Smiths, the Fender Custom Shop Telecasters. Uh, all of those guitars that I've used in a number of my videos have all been loners, uh, mostly from my buddy Sean. Hi, Sean. Uh, Sean just recently picked up a lovely Les Paul Gold Top uh, to add to his collection, but I've, uh, I've yet to get my hands on that one. Uh, I personally uh, don't go in for high-end guitars myself. Not that I don't want them, it's just that I can't afford them. Uh, you know, my, coll my collection is strictly quantity over quality. Uh, I've got a family to feed, but uh, I still like collecting guitars. Uh, regardless, my collection is mostly mid-price guitars uh, in the $500 to $1,000 range with a couple of cheap uh, parts casters that I've thrown together myself that range from barely playable to uh, rather outstanding guitars, if I do say so myself. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we have here in my uh, guitar collection. This one uh, is going uh, the furthest back. This is from the 80s. This is a cheap Yamaha FG331 acoustic guitar. It is the only acoustic guitar that I have, and I do not like acoustic guitars. Uh, even though it, I had it uh, professionally set up uh, a couple of uh, years ago, it still plays like a pig and uh, doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Well, it sounds like an acoustic guitar, I suppose. Uh, this was given to me by uh, a, an old girlfriend of mine who had it kicking around her apartment that uh, an old boyfriend of hers left there. So uh, she gave it to me, even though uh, at this point in my life, I wasn't really even playing guitar, but I, you know, I could play. And so I'd pick it up and I'd <laughs> strum some chords. And she said, oh, take that guitar. I'm not, I'm not using it. So I did, and I still have it. And uh, I used it in a recent video for um, Pigs on the Wing, and it sounded just fine. But, um, you know, uh, Tom Schultz uh, on uh, More Than a Feeling, uh, he just used a cheap old piece of junk Yamaha uh, acoustic guitar that he had around uh, the studio uh, when he recorded More Than a Feeling. So uh, know that. Next time you listen to More Than a Feeling, it's probably a guitar, just like this one. Uh, and uh, my, my lone classical guitar, I had uh, at one point, when I, when I first started uh, playing guitar again after taking a break for 25 years, I, uh, I, I first got back into classical guitar and I became quite hooked. And uh, I, I, I'm so out of practice that I'm not going to play anything for you right now. But for the first year, all I played was classical. And uh, I started collecting classical guitars. And I was up to uh, four or five classical guitars and a couple of fairly, you know, uh, nice classicals in the, I, I think I had one that was about a fourteen fifteen hundred dollar classical guitar, uh, but I sold that and um, when I got back into the electrics and uh, this is the only one I kept. This is a La Patrie. It's a Canadian made uh, etude, which is about a four five hundred dollar classical guitar, but uh, you know, uh, one of the better classical guitars that you can get in that price range. Uh, just a lovely guitar and it's, it's got a beautiful tone on it. And, uh, but that is my only classical classical guitar and um, this is my baby this is my Jackson uh, which you've seen in in a lot of my videos uh, Jackson performer PS4 uh, I got this uh, second hand I think I paid about four or five hundred dollars for it uh, from my local uh, music shop 
about 17 or 18 years ago, even though I wasn't playing at this point in my life, I thought maybe I would like to start playing again. So I went in and I bought this and uh, it sat under the bed for about uh, 15 years <laughs> or more and uh, getting all rusty and, and unplayed and unloved, the poor thing. And uh, so when I started playing again and when I started my YouTube channel like three years ago, this was the only electric guitar that I had. And uh, this is the one that my first number of my videos were played on and this is my baby and this is my favorite guitar and this thing with its uh, stock Jackson pickups and stock Jackson uh, tremolo locking tremolo system uh, just you know I can yank the crap out of this whammy bar up and down and do whatever I want and it stays in tune and uh, these these Jackson pickups sound fantastic and this is my favorite guitar in the whole world I think when they were new they were like a $900 guitar or something like that it's a mid-priced Jackson it's not one of the high-end ones but uh, it's as you can see it's it's been well played the neck on the back is all worn off and uh, I love 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 this guitar and uh, I wouldn't uh, give it away sell it trade it for nothing and uh, this I is my Squire Olarn uh, this is a uh, Squire signature model it's one of the higher end Squires it was only released in Thailand and it's a signature model from a fella named Olarn uh, who is uh, a famous Thai uh, guitar player uh, I've never heard of him before until I, I, I found this on my local marketplace and uh, I looked it up, a guy was selling it for like a hundred bucks, and uh, I looked it up on online and uh, found some stuff about it, and it's one of the higher-end Squires. These sell, uh, at the time, I think uh, it was back in 2012 or 13, these sold for like $700, so it's, it's a nice high-end Squire. It's got uh, Duncan Design hot rails in it, so it's got like three humbuckers, but you know, the Strat uh, design, and only one volume, no tone. And I also dropped a kill switch into this one, which I needed to do uh, probably uh, some uh, Tom Morello, I think, I needed this for. And uh, anyway, really interesting guitar. And, uh, you know, it's got that classic Strat shape, but, uh, you know, with triple uh, triple hot rail humbuckers and just the one volume, no tone, and a really interesting guitar and kind of rare, you know. It's not a guitar that you see around here very often. And, uh, you know, when I, uh, when I called the guy and said, I want to buy that guitar for $100, uh, I was, my, the first question that I was going to ask him was where he got it, because I had done my research and uh, found out that they were only available in Thailand. And uh, when I went to pick the guitar up, uh, he was Thai. So there you go. He obviously uh, picked it up in Thailand and brought it with him. Uh, this is my uh, David Gilmour replica Strat. This is a parts caster that I made. Uh, it's light as a feather. The uh, the body, I don't know where I got the body, but I, it must be made like balsa wood or something, but it, it's really light. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's plywood or what, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not a tone wood type of player uh, I, 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 or type of, uh, you know, I don't have that mindset. I, uh, I don't think uh, wood makes a whole lot of difference as far as tone of a guitar goes. Uh, and I put this whole thing together myself and, and uh, it's, it's a replica. It's got the fender. It's got a sticker on it because it's uh, like an Amazon maple neck that I, I think I paid about a hundred bucks for. And, uh, but it's a beautiful neck and this guitar plays really nice. I've got Tone Rider pickups in this and uh, I think Tone Rider vintage pickups. And uh, I use this for almost all of my David Gilmore covers, uh, except maybe one. But uh, this is uh, a great little guitar uh, for a parts caster. I, I really like that one a lot. But as far as parts casters go, this is my baby. This is a, uh, I don't know where, a, another a body that I don't know where it came from. I just picked it up on my local marketplace, uh, you know, Strat body for sale. I, I don't know if it's an actual Strat body or if it's a Squire or whatnot. Uh, and I got a Mexi uh, Strat neck. I had a different neck on this guitar for a long time and it played like a pig and I really didn't like it. And, uh, but I found this Mexi, uh, Mexi Strat neck and uh, I put that on it instead and the whole guitar just came together. And now this guitar plays like a dream. Uh, I've got Mexi, this whole, uh, this whole pick guard, uh, all the electronics and the pickups came out of a Mexican Strat. So this is basically a Mexican Strat, except for the body. I don't know where the body came from, but uh, I love this guitar. I, I, I played my, uh, my, uh, 
my cover of uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, Red House on this thing and uh, it sounded fantastic. It's got Grover tuners on it. I've got this one blocked. Uh, you probably can see in there, but I've got this one blocked off. So uh, no tremolo on this one. This one stays down, but uh, love. This is one of my favorite guitars right now. Uh, this is uh, my Frankenstrat. This is one of the first guitars that I ever built. I built this and gave it to my daughter, my 13, 14 year old daughter, who had discovered Van Halen and had fallen in love uh, about two or three years back. So I gave her this for Christmas and uh, I took it back from her just to do a little work on it because right now it plays like a pig and it's really difficult to play. And so it needs some work and a little uh, TLC. But uh, I built this myself and I replicated it as well as I could with the, uh, you know, the lights, uh, the reflectors on the back. Uh, the paint job I did all myself. It's a little dusty right now because it has not been played. Uh, you know, it, it, it looks basically exactly the same. I've got the quarter on here and the only difference is it doesn't have a uh, maple neck it has a rosewood neck but uh, it, it does not play well this guitar so it needs a little bit of work but uh, this was a lot of fun this this little project putting this thing together for her and uh, so I got this back from her so I could uh, do a little work on it but uh, you know looks good and uh, what else we got here? This is my son's uh, mini squire, a uh, little mini squire that I picked up for, I don't know, 80 bucks, I think, and uh, started teaching him when he was four, and he really didn't take to it very well. So this has kind of just been sitting around for the past year or so, and I'm going to get him back into this. But this, these are really cool little, uh, these little mini squires. And uh, I don't know, they're brand new. They're like 200 bucks or something like that. But uh, I bought that for him. And uh, this guitar here... Uh, was given to me by one of my subscribers and I used it in my most recent video for uh, Black Betty by Ram Jam and uh, Bill Bartlett. Uh, this is a mid-90s uh, Ibanez RG570 uh, and uh, this guy Jonathan uh, contacted me a couple of months ago and asked me if I would like to have this guitar and uh, I said I would love to have that guitar and uh, so I went and picked it up. He lives in my city and uh, so it's, uh, it's an RG that he modified he took out the tremolo that was in it and put in a, a Goto uh, floating tremolo locking system. He put in Seymour Duncan uh, pickups, humbuckers. This is a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge in the neck. He's got an Alnico uh, El Nico, uh, Pro 2 or Alnico 2 Pro. Uh, he took out the middle pickup, which was in uh, this guitar initially out of the shop and uh, filled in and, and did this kind of uh, Jackson Pollock paint job on it. Uh, ripped out the tone control, filled that hole in as well, or he ripped out the volume and moved the volume down here and uh, went toneless on this one. And uh, just a brilliant guitar and uh, plays really, really well. And uh, I've got, I've, I've been doing some electronic work on this one. So I've got the guts ripped out of it. I, it was having a little problem with the, uh, the selector switch, but uh, it's, play, it's playing and sounding absolutely fantastic now, especially this uh, Seymour, Junk, Seymour, Junkin, Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. Anyway, lovely, lovely shredder. Oh, I'm losing my, I'm losing my lights here. Hold on a sec, it's all coming apart. And uh, what else we got here? This is my uh, another shredder that I have. This is my Ibanez RXVV uh, RX what RG three XXV. These came out in 2012. This is the 25th anniversary of the uh, the RG model, and uh, this is a a very very gorgeous uh, Ibanez RG. And again, this is one of the higher end RGs. I think these were about a thousand dollars when they uh, when they first came out, and they've got Demarzio pickups, uh, Air Norton in the neck and uh, a deactivator uh, bridge pickup, which is uh, supposed to mimic a, a, an active pickup without being an active pickup itself. You know, no batteries in the back or anything like that, but it's got all this, you know, little dials here for dialing in your action and whatnot. And it's got a edge three tremolo on it and nice uh, color dot inlays and reverse headstock, which is kind of cool looking. And, and uh, I like this guitar a lot when I'm doing some shredding. And uh, I picked this up secondhand and got a good price on it. I think I paid about 400 bucks for it. And uh, you know, they're going, you see them on reverb now, over a thousand. So anyway, like that guitar. 
And uh, when I first started the uh, the top 100 solo list, I was uh, I didn't have a Stratocaster, and then I started getting into Stevie Ray Vaughan and Eric Clapton and David Gilmour, and I was playing them all on this guy. And uh, you know, it, it's shaped like a Strat, but it's it's not a Strat. So I knew I needed a Strat, and uh, so I was borrowing uh, my friend Sean Strat a lot. Uh, he has like three Strats, American-made Strats, and I knew I needed one myself, and I didn't want to go out and spend. Two thousand or three thousand dollars on a Strat, so uh, I bought this Maxi Strat, and uh, I took the, uh, the 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 entire pickup um, uh, pick guard pickup loaded, you know, and I I put it in that guitar, the uh, the, the parts caster, and I I, I bought a, a 920D Custom Shop uh, vintage 70s uh, loaded pick guard and dropped it in this, and uh, this guitar is awesome, and uh, I absolutely love this. I've got uh, 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 Grover tuners on this as well, you know, and it really stays in tune well. And I've got you know I put graphite in all of all of my nuts, uh, put graphite on my nuts. Uh, graphite in all of my nuts on all of my guitars because it really helps uh, you know if you're going to have tuning issues it's almost always right there uh, you know the strings catching on the plastic and uh, the plastic of the nuts and I think I replaced this nut I put a, a graph tech nut in this thing and uh, so this is a bit of a hot rodded uh, mexi strap but uh, I love this guitar and I've used it a lot in a lot of videos and uh, we're getting down to the last two here this is my uh, one another one of my favorite parts casters. This was a uh, began its life as a Amazon Donner uh, Strat uh, S S type guitar, and I completely I did a review of the of the Donner when this was originally a Donner and uh, great great guitars for like 150 bucks or 180 bucks or whatever they are, and uh, so I took it I stripped it I painted it this gunmetal gray. I put a couple of Wilkinson single coils in the middle and in the neck. I put an Entwistle X2 a humbucker in the bridge. Uh, did all the wiring myself and, uh, you know, painted the headstock. I've got, uh, what do I got on here? Grover tuners on this thing. No, Fender. Fender tuners on this thing. And uh, anyway, you know, uh, Graftech nut, Graftech string tree. And uh, I really, this is a beautiful guitar and uh, I've used this a number of times in my videos as well and uh, I'm proud of this one I, I, I really really like this but the, the core of this guitar is uh, you know one of those uh, one of those inexpensive donors that you can buy on Amazon at least the body and the neck and uh, you know it's a great uh, you know it's it's uh, what's the what's the wood on this thing um, I, I, ebony I think it's an ebony fretboard and uh, not something you see on a lot of cheap uh, or cheaper budget guitars but uh, lovely fretboard a little scratchy when I first got it but I've got it well worked in now and a uh, nice maple neck and uh, like this one a lot and I've used this in a lot of videos as well and uh, last and sadly least <laughs> is my uh, telly. I've always, you know, I, I've never liked tellies. I, I don't like the shape of a Telecaster. I, 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 it's too, I don't know, too country for me, I guess. But uh, I, I, I kind of needed one uh, for, you know, some of the videos I was doing. And I'm like, ah, okay, I got to get a telly to complete. You know, I've got, uh, oh, I've, no, I'm not done. I've got one guitar left. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, I got to get a telly, but I don't want to spend, I don't want to, you know, I borrowed my friend Sean's custom shop, $5,000 custom shop Telecaster, and it was fantastic. But um, I don't know why there's a capo on this one. I think my daughter was playing it. And uh, so I, I, I found this on my local. It's, it's a, a Squire um, Vintage Modified. Again, it's one of the higher end Squires. I think they're like $500 when they're new. And I got it for a couple of hundred bucks secondhand. It's got Duncan Design. <clears throat> this is a stacked humbucker in the bridge and uh, uh, more of a, a, a zebra humbucker in the neck. Uh, I don't like this guitar. Uh, I don't like its playability uh, and I don't like its tone. So, uh, 
guess I'm out of luck with this guy. Uh, so I, I've worked on the action and I've worked on the action and I just cannot get it to where I like it. And, uh, and then when I plug it in and uh, I don't like the way it sounds either. So uh, I'm going to sell that guy, I think. I, I'm really not happy with it and maybe get myself a, a telly that's a bit more, maybe a bit more high end. And this is my latest acquisition. And this is a PRS SE245. I've always wanted a Les Paul and I've bored my friend Sean's Les Paul uh, a couple of times, a number of times actually. And uh, I really want a Les Paul, but I can't afford a $3,000 guitar and, uh, you know, the, the rabbit hole that that would lead down to in, uh, you know, start collecting $3,000 guitars. So uh, I'm not going to do that, but I wanted a Les Paul style guitar. So I was thinking, do I buy an Epiphone? No, I don't want an Epiphone unless it's maybe one of the higher end Epiphone, a $1,000 Epiphone or a $1,200 Epiphone. And, and uh, so I've been keeping my eye out on the local marketplace uh, looking for a guitar like that. And they haven't been coming along. And then this guy, this PRS, uh, you know, which is a Les Paul style guitar with the, you know, the two volumes, two tones, three-way switch up here, humbucker, humbucker and uh you know big fat neck on it and uh, this is their version of a les paul and uh you know it's not the high-end paul reed smith uh, the prs these are uh you know they're thousand dollar um prs's paul reed smiths whereas their higher ends are up in the three four thousand dollar range but uh i got this for like four or five hundred dollars and uh i Love it. Lo absolutely adore this guitar. If you've been watching any of my videos in the past three, four months since I got this guitar, I'm using it in almost everything. And uh, it just feels really comfortable. The tone out of these PRS vintage humbuckers, these uh, Zebra humbuckers, is fantastic. And uh, just, just a, a lovely guitar. And, uh, you know, I didn't like it, actually, when I saw the ad uh, for it. I knew the price that this guy had for this guitar was really good and uh, i'm like god it's 400 dollars for a prs se uh and it's a les paul style guitar just what i've been looking for and i've been i was willing to pay eight or nine hundred dollars and uh but i looked at it and i saw the picture and i said you know i just don't like it i don't like the flat top and i don't like the the, the burst that's on it and uh, I, I, you know, and I contacted one of my friends and I said, should I buy that guitar? You know, the ad just came up and I don't want to miss out. And he said, if you don't buy it, I'm buying it. He said, wait till you see it, it you know, up close. It's going to look a lot nicer. And uh, so I, I contacted the guy, said, I'll, I'll buy it. And uh, by the time I got there to pick up the guitar about 20 minutes later, he had already had about seven or eight more calls uh, for this guitar. And, uh, but I got in there early, but just, it just lovely. And I, I've, uh, I've grown to love it. And uh, flat top or not, uh, you know, I, I prefer more of an arched uh, Les Paul style, but uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really grown on me. And I actually really nice like this uh, walnut burst that's on it, uh, you know, in high hindsight and uh anyway that's that's my guitar collection uh i think i've covered everything and uh you know was that interesting i don't know <laughs> you know you asked me for it so i'm doing it but uh anyway that's that's pretty much covers my guitars and uh except for one uh my my daughter has one of my guitars one of my parts casters that i built that uh, I've only used, I think, once or twice. It's my uh, my my Shelby Cobra uh, parts caster, which uh, again plays like a pig. But uh, my parts casters, except for this Strat over here and the David Gilmore, uh, you know, but all the other ones uh, are a bit uh, a bit weak, I guess. You know, they look fine, they sound fine, but they they don't play very well. So I, maybe I need a little more uh, a little more work in my my skills in setting up a guitar. But uh, anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, you know. Subscribe if you haven't and hit the little notification bell and uh, so you know when I post something new. Darn camera shut off just as I was finishing up. Uh, where was I? Uh, give me a subscribe if you haven't and uh, hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload something new. And uh, you guys take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time. Ciao.